ghosts, right? They have a lot of ghost experience. Oh. Do I have wow. any stories? Let's go. Even now, like, we'll drive past places and be like, ooh, ooh, okay. I would love okay. to go in there. Well, Michelle will be like, I'd love to go in there, and I'm like... When we first got there, everything was really quite quiet. And as I said that, it stopped dead and went in the other direction. And she said... She's small town ones but I really want to go to like someone that's got like what you need to do is go to like a psychic fair. fair that's what I want yeah there is one person who I would get a reading from Teresa Caputo no Chip Coffee me too you know the who Chip Coffee is of course oh yeah Dude, we, we, no great hello? Yeah, sorry. I forgot where I've I was watching from Chip I need to Coffee look into the camera years. like this is the office I forgot where I was from it I'm sorry yeah, no, like I, I watched it's, it's him not... when he was back on Paranormal State. Yeah, Paranormal State. That's where I know him from too. And then he did Psychic Kids. Yeah. And now he does Kindred Spirits. With, yeah. With Amy and Adam. How and did you feel when you found out that um, Will Warren when she, when she died? Yeah. I was heartbroken. Me too. I like and literally. Cried. I'm absolutely furious at her son. What happened? Uh, he's selling off all the stuff that they had in their museum to keep it away from people. The dolls. This, uh, oh, because I actually saw Annabelle the other day. I didn't want to. It wasn't really my choice. Yeah, but I, I did see Annabelle the other day. And after I watched that movie, I, I was home alone. Like, literally, my, no, my kid was gone. Idea. I literally walked in the house, and the light blew. Yeah. And then, like, Steve wanted to watch The Grudge. I don't know if you've ever yes, watched that Yes, the backwards. <laughs> um, and I'm laying in bed and I've got like the covers up over my head going la 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 I'm not listening and you guys were asleep and the door slammed shut to the bedroom and I looked at him and I said turn it off no and he's like oh it's okay and I'm pulling up the covers even further and then he starts he gets up for a second and he comes up underneath the covers. Oh my like, gosh. You are gonna die. You wanna die? Let's go right now. Alright, your your scary story your your okay. ghost story time. So sorry, we had to stop for a minute to get the camera charger. And then and then like I realized that I put the dead battery in the dead camera and And then both batteries now, were it's, actually dead. It's flashing. Is that it's that's charging. because now we've decided to just leave it plugged in because oh, I think okay. both my batteries just died. Yeah, yeah. So we're probably the moisture. Things, yeah. uh, there's, there's a bunch of them that are attached. small, so I'll do like the ten, like the ten to twenty second ones really quickly, and then we'll talk about the big one. Yeah. Because the big one happened like for years, and it like I have a lot of trauma based off of it, so specifically with open doors. Yeah. Um, Ooh, that's oh yeah. So I mean, there's we been there's been a couple like when for for years, honestly, we had people. Who would, um, I can't, I, people isn't even right the word. Like, it was obviously children. You like, have this. We would, well, we'd have knocking or cupboards would be pulled open or locked doors would be pulled open. Windows would be slid open. You'd close something and walk away for five minutes and come back and it would be open again. And, but like, and there was we always. the door all the time because the, we didn't want the door open well, anymore. There was, well, no, even then the door, it, it's, it's, it would just be pulled open. Like you, you knew it was locked. You had done it 10 seconds before and it'd be pulled open. Um, and you'd hear little giggles. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I know, I know for most people it's really creepy when kids giggle in movies, but like, honestly, I was never scared of that. We were younger too, right? Well, so no, it happened for years. Like literally up until we left, yeah. there would be kids giggling. It was, it seemed like. If you had, that if you had a, like a, a, fi a five and a seven year old or something in the house, like playing practical jokes, it was kind of just like, yeah. okay, time to stop it, now. And it would, it would just stop. So it was, it wasn't ever something that was really scary for us because there was never no menacing. Yeah. There was no malicious there intent. Was, yeah. Like it, it was just a feeling. Yes. It's scary in horror movies because they throw in that like scary, scary music, music. Stuff, but in real life it really wasn't that bad. And I mean, we actually found evidence to support that like. Where our house was used to be a barn, and there used to be a house in our backyard. And uh, a couple of kids died in a house fire back there, which we learned afterwards, which was really kind of creepy. Way, it was like, ooh. The youngest one was a redhead. So I'm a, I'm a redhead. I don't Actually. know if you guys remember that, but uh, yeah. But 
it, 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 that would that Thomas never, was his name. That never really bothered us. Um, there was one time uh, my mom and stepdad had uh, some friends over, and this lady was walking down the stairs carrying her baby, and I was right behind her, and I actually watched her trip, and she went like this, fell forward, stopped, and then was pushed upright, upright. again, and the whole Joe. set of stairs just reeked of like. Rose. Like rose, like old lady perfume, and it was like. And that's what jo Joan used to and wear. And apparently, yeah, we asked, and that's what Charlie, the guy who built our house's mom, used to wear, and she died in the house. Um, but again, it's, it's the same thing. There was no malicious intent there, or there was nothing. And then there was the man, and I don't know how to refer to him otherwise. So, so I always knew him as the man. It, it was. It was very obvious to me that whatever this was, I'm not even sure that it was human, but it took a man shape and it had a, a very large you, you know, when you see like a very large kind of intimidating a guy shadow. and, and as a child specific, it's not even that. It's just like, if you see a very large intimidating guy and as a child, they're so much bigger than you they tower a little bit. and, and if they have that, you know, that energy, that really bad, like, I don't like you and I don't want to be around you energy. It, it was like that, but every night. So when I was like, I must have been 10 or 11, because it was after my dad was gone. Um, we did redo my room. We painted it kind of this pa pastel blue color. Yeah. But I also kind of went through and got rid of a lot of things that I'd had as a very young child. Because, you know, when you're a teenager, you go through this whole phase of like, okay, the that's the anymore. old me. I'm so much older I'm and bigger. Big and I'm like, I'm like 13. But anyway... 13 tops. Um, so we redid my room and I took a bunch of stuff out. So like either that or I shoved a bunch of stuff back in my closet. And at this point too, we also took off the doors to my closet. I already had issues with the doors because my brother used to like to hide in them for like 20 minutes while I was sitting in my room and then jump out at me. So I was already freaked out by my closet and like then, like, other things I had happened. issues with closed doors at that point, so what I started to do at that point, I not only took the crucifix out of my room, out of my room, I put it in with my mom's jewelry, I believe. Um, I also, we also, we also took the, my closet doors off. Because um, we were going to paint things, and we just honestly yeah. didn't really end up putting them back. I didn't need them, so we got rid of them. Um, but I started sleeping with my door open. And for the longest time, I was fine. And then maybe, like, not not even a year later, like, several... It had to be a couple months later. I don't know what happened. I never played with an Ouija board as a kid. I don't know if you did. I I was already I so... I already knew so much. I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not opening doors. I'm not doing anything like that. Um, one night I went to bed and I laid down in my bed, which was kind of like a foot, like a futon yeah. at that point. Um, cause that was what was cool when I was like 13. Um, I wanted one so bad when I was she like was a so excited. We, we it had, my brother and I both got futons. I hated, it was so uncomfortable, but I wanted to be cool. Um, <laughs> so I'm laying on this futon, my head's near my door and my room is so small. Like honestly, it's a glorified it's like a broom closet, closet. but it, it was, it was appropriate size for me. I was small at the time, so it made yeah. sense. Um, and so I'm laying in there, my head's near the door, and all of a sudden it feels like somebody's staring at me. And, like, not just staring, like, glaring. Like, someone is like standing at was... my door, like, you've you effed messed up. up, you are in trouble, you are going to get hurt. Like, it was not like, you're, you're just, you're just gonna get grounded. It was like, you are in trouble, you have to do something, or you're gonna get hurt. Like, physically harmed and I mean I've got a whole bunch of past issues with trauma and stuff like that too so I immediately went like still as a statue oh my god what is happening expect you to look up in the doorway and like I don't know like I mean wouldn't be my mom I didn't expect my mom to hurt me like that but I was like oh I messed up someone's in the doorway they're gonna like I'm in trouble like an yeah thing. it was just it was just like it was almost it was like, like you just felt like you've done something wrong. I've messed up and I don't know what I did. And I was standing like just laying like bones still shoulders like to my ears. And I look over at the doorway and there's a shadow there. 
and I have this terrifying realization that there is no one in the house big enough to be that shadow. And I have this moment of, there's someone in the house. My brain goes, intruder, oh my god, this is bad, how do I let mom know? So my brain is like, okay, what do I do, what do I do? And I immediately go, just stay still. He doesn't know, he might not know you're there. Like, you know what I mean? It's that fight or flight instinct. Don't and my brain, went, my brain went, my brain went, fighting is not going to help you. You it's have to stay still, stay still. Pretend and I, I must have laid there for seven, seven to ten minutes, bone still, heart beating out of my chest. I think that's probably the first time I ever had a panic attack in my yeah. entire life, and I didn't even realize it till later on. But I just lay there like, don't move or he will kill you. Like, that was the feeling. I was, was like, I was like, was. I'm going to die if I move. Yeah. And he, it's seven to ten minutes, and then all, like, there was no sound, there was no breathing, no. there was no anything. There was just this man standing there. It's just that vision. And then there was a, and a, like it just didn't see heavy, you and turned and left. Yeah, very heavy. Here's footsteps. the thing. He never picked up his feet. It was like he turned around. Just the, It's just a shadow. Like there were no features or nothing. Like he turned around and he walked away, but he never moved his feet, but there were footsteps. And I was like, yeah. I, I literally didn't even get up to go get my mom yet because I was I was still in like I almost died like I have I'm 13 I don't know any better whatever I almost died and I was just like okay okay I must have been hallucinating it's fine I won't mention it to mom I won't do anything so I didn't I just didn't say anything I I laid in bed for probably another two hours I had a TV in my room at that point which was one of the new additions but it was like when you had um satellite but you had to put the wires into your room so whatever you're watching the living room you could watch, you watch in the bedroom yeah. that was it you couldn't have different channels on different tvs Sorry. so i was we were really high techy decky at that point we thought i turned i turned the tv on and there was like infomercials on because i was just like well, i was care. just like i need something that's I not light and noise yeah and the and noise machine drown it all out. yeah like i just turned it on just for noise, noise. for light so i, I could see with my TV if on. if the shadow like because i i was in the dark right there was no night light there was no anything i was just in the dark and i could see a shadow but i was like was the shadow actually there was i hallucinating so i turned the tv on so you could also see like, was i just back, in between right? sleep and not yeah. sleep so I went to, I went, I finally went to bed, went up, went to school in the morning. And I think the next day I asked mom to grab my old nightlight. I had overnight become afraid of the dark, but yeah, no, like, and I went through this weird phase for a week. And of course, you know, my teenage years were not great. My hormones were messed up. I was a very like angsty, like emo teen. Um, and, uh, for like a week I went through this whole, like, did that actually happen? I don't think it did. And I, I kind of like gaslit myself I was like oh no that wasn't we real it wasn't real everything. I'm um, sure I imagine that. it wasn't I'm sure real it was you're me. fine it wasn't yeah. real and then about a week later I was lying in bed my nightlight was on the other side uh, on the other side of my room my door's over here and I'm lying in bed again with my head close to the door and I hear yeah. and my brain goes uh, no, 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 no. And I get up immediately. I close my door. I'm like, I'm not having this. It's not happening. It's not happening. I close the door and I go lay down in bed. And I, as soon as I hit my bed, it's the same feeling. Like someone's staring at me. Like I've messed up and messed up worse this time. It's like, it was not you're in trouble, you're gonna get hurt. The, literally the feeling was, open the store right now or you're gonna die. And I was like, this is not okay. This is not okay. My room is lit up and I, I'm terrified to open the door. And what my mom had done too is put a nightlight in the hallway as well. And, you can and I, I was oh, like, I'm just gonna try it. something. And I got down on the floor next to my door and I looked under the door and you could see his feet. The silhouetted underneath the door and I was like okay bad 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 and I went and I got in bed and I pulled the blanket up as high as I could over my head and but it didn't make a difference it felt like he could see me through the door but I also knew he was outside for Definitely some reason outside. for some reason 
he couldn't get in my door. I didn't know why. I had no clue. I was like, I know I'm safe in here, but I don't feel safe right now. Like, right. it just, animalistically, I do not and feel. And you kind of, kind of think about it, and, like, the first time he stood at your door, but didn't come in. The second yeah. time he stands at your door. And yeah. even though, like, yeah. you think of ghosts, you think they, yeah. doors can't stop them. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, why? But yeah. there's, the, the only thing I could ever think of, because he could never come in my room either, is the only thing I could think of was the smudge. Because I was... I no, was assaulted. I have never been so terrified in my life of anything. Yeah. And I I still, a lot of the time, have a fear of... Not the dark, but what's in it. I'm not afraid of being in the dark. I actually like being in the dark. Yeah. But I'm terrified that the instant I turn the lights out, something's there. Because of this specific... Right. And it went, it went for ages. Like, months before I finally went... Mom, <laughs> I feel like somebody's watching me. And she was like, what? And I was like, sometimes when I'm lying in bed at night, there's a man who comes and stands by my door and he stares at me and I feel like he's going to hurt me. And she was like, whoa, what? No, 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 no. And then she was like, where's, she didn't know I had gotten rid of the crucifix at this point and put, she didn't go in her jewelry box very often, but she was like, where's the crucifix? And I said, what? This had been, oh God, it might've even been years later. And she was like, where's the crucifix? And I was like, what? She's like, the crucifix. I was like, the thing you had on my fan? And we had this whole like weird conversation about, she was like, this is what happened when you were little. And I put that up and it stopped. Did you take it down? And I went, yeah. She, hadn't, she didn't go in my room often. She was a good parent like that. She let me have my own space. Um, but I was like, no. She, I was like, I put it in your jewelry box. And she's like, put it back up in your room. So we literally uh, took it out, wrapped it around the back. We didn't even put it up on the fan. We wrapped it around the back of my doorknob so we and, come in. and closed the door. And I, again. I don't, I didn't see him there again. Yeah. And it was like, wait, so if I didn't take that down, I could save myself all the trouble. But anyways, but literally just, I can't be in the dark anywhere with an open doorway. So, I mean, you've stayed over my house multiple able. times. You know me. I close and lock my door. Yeah. That is that is part of... It's not me afraid people ritual. are going to, like... No. Be like, oh, hey, it's can I help people. you? Like, it's... It's things. Things. I don't know what's out there, and I don't like it, so I don't do that. What I think might be the same thing is... Um, we've also had things growl at us just walking through the house... I haven't Yours. had, I haven't really had a lot of issues outside of my room. Most of my ghost issues with this specific thing were outside of, inside my room. Um, but I was most in the... Most of your issues were either in your room or in my room or on the way down to our new room. Yeah. Well, then there was one, of, but there was one in the kitchen, right? One in so the kitchen was this, with this, you and with Steve. This was the only other time I was genuinely afraid. afraid. Most of our other ghosty things were just like thank you, we appreciate you, like, and it was good. Um, but I was in the kitchen one day. tell them to stop. Like, and I, the boys were running up and down the hall, we yeah. would say, you need okay. to stop. It's bedtime now, and go to bed. To <laughs> um, but I was standing in the kitchen sorting the recycling because my stepdad is horrible at sorting, sorting recycling. I'm calling you out, Steve. Um, <laughs> sorting the recycling because he would just throw it all in one bin and it, at this point we had to sort. She's calling you out, so make sure you subscribe. Yes. <laughs> I'm calling you out. Um, so I'm sorting the recycling into different bags because we had to put them out in different bags. And so I was sorting the recycling and I'm facing the wall right next to our kitchen door. And I'm sorting and I'm not paying attention. There's so much space behind me. And all of a sudden I hear, hey! Which... Okay, my stepdad is a jokester. I love him, but he is. He's the type to go, hey, and then run. I, I went, right? Like, ugh. Um, jump scare. You were jump and then, scared. And then I'm like, but it sounded exactly like him. And I set down the bag, and I went to turn around and go, Steve. And I went, where is he? <laughs> he must have run around the corner. I walked around the corner. I walked straight through our house to the other side. I checked my room, my brother's room, the bathroom, the living room, behind the couch, Man, everywhere. Room. And I went to the basement door because my parents were living in the basement at that point. And I banged on the door and I pulled it open. And I was, oh, I'm almost in tears already. Um, I was literally like, mom? And she went, yeah. And I was like, 
please tell me Steve's not down there with you. And she was like, why? And I said, please tell me Steve's not down there with you. And she went, yeah, he's been, he's down here. And I said, how long has he been down there? And she said, the past been. two hours. And I literally, like, instant, just, like, can't breathe, no air, just crawled into the kitchen. And my mom obviously heard me in tears, comes running up the stairs, and I'm in the kitchen going like... <sighs> She's like, what's going on? And I was like, man, behind me, like having, like unable to breathe, full panic attack, obviously. My mom's like, what happened? And I, she finally gets it out of me and she was like, I'm going to go look. And she went and looked everywhere to see if she could find anything. And she went immediately downstairs, grabbed the stage and was like, no, <laughs> none of this. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. This again. So just because you're telling, you've told me that story before, yeah. but it's only because I'm talking only because we talked about this earlier. Yeah. So, one of the first times you stayed at my house after my son was born. Yeah. You were in the bathroom and you, oh God. in the mor, it was like three in the morning, and you came in and you woke me and you're like, "Were you in the bathroom?" And I'm like, "You just woke me. What do you mean was I in the bathroom?" You're like, "I swear, I was in the washroom. I had just finished up. I was washing my hands, and." I swear you were in there and you said, hey, what are you doing? Outside and, the door, yeah. And I literally turned around to tell you I was just washing my hands and you were gone. I'm like, I, yeah. I wasn't gone. I was just never there. And then I walked over and like, I think you had a light on, but I think you'd fallen asleep with the light on. Probably and I was like, off. I was like, I opened your door and I was like, you in the bathroom? Yeah, no, she wasn't in the bathroom uh, or near the bathroom at all. She was asleep. So... Yeah. That's a thing. Um, the, I mean, I had one other experience, but the other experience was also one of my good experiences that, I mean, it was terrifying in the moment, but it was not a, like, something's gonna kill me experience, which yeah. I'm cool with, but I did uh, see a man in, like, I think it was, night. what is it? Oh, uh, what we? No, 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 we looked it up. I think it was, like, 1907 military gear. That's I remember right. him so vividly. I knew, I know, I could tell you how long his hair was what his nose shape looked like, the color of his eyes, everything. And it was, Walked around the corner, and it was like it there was, was an actual ponytail. man sitting on... The, nope, long hair. You said it was in a ponytail. Which was weird to me, that he had long hair, was but was in military gear, but it was long, blonde so hair. So they were allowed then, then. No, it was allowed then. Was it? Yeah. yeah. So, like, it was like the early 1900s, but I literally was like, you know what, I'm just going to do a little research. Maybe I'm so confusing things from movies, whatever. It's a specific uniform. I literally found it and I said holy crap, mom look and she was like what and I was like that's what he was wearing that is exactly what he was wearing like tripped and I of course like I, I walked around the corner and went right. and backed around and yeah. made my mom go check there's nothing there um and it wasn't a bad feeling it was just like he was just sitting on the stairs staring at me but it wasn't like a he smiled at me it was like end. a said he, yeah he like hey like a, you're here and i was like nah, nah. Yeah. um nothing like, ever happened uh, with you're that. not supposed to be here i'm supposed to be here yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah that one was and real smoked, was really you tobacco you said uh, i don't even remember that part yeah. it was just it was just it was unnerving but it wasn't malicious was it? yeah but the okay, so about the guy who used to stand at my door. This this is the intense part. So my mom and I were sitting down at Christmas, and this is what I showed her the military uniform and all sorts of stuff from this other guy. And we're just talking about our ghost history and all sorts of stuff and what we remember, little bits and pieces, um, like lights, light hanging lights yeah. swinging, anything like that. And I said, "Mom," and she was like, "What?" And I was like. So you know that man I would tell you that was standing at my door? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, did you ever see him? She goes, I'm not sure. I might have. And I said, to me, he looked like a very tall. He must have been like six, six, like tall, tall, like might have fit inside the doorway. But if he did, it was just barely. And I mean, I'm not sure. I said, I'm not sure if it was because I was so much smaller than him. That it was that weird, bigger. that he seemed so big, but I was like, and he, he wasn't, there was nothing identifiable about him. He was very obviously a man, but he was kind of loose shaped. And I said, except for, and at the same time we said the hat. Yeah. And I was like, we both looked at each other like, what? 
she the heck at me is like going on? Her. Like, literally like she had slapped me. Because it felt like it. Like, she had slapped me. And she was like, I have seen him. And I went, what? And she yeah. was like, I've seen him standing outside my window. Shadow standing and outside my window I looking in. how tall he was. Because you've never even seen the house, have you? Um... Yeah, we, we had gl- the glass windows, yeah, right? The the windows on the side um, are it, it was a, a single a, like a bungalow, but the, the underneath the underneath part was raised. Yeah. It was like the basement part would have ended like three feet above the ground, and then there was the other story. Yeah. So he was tall enough that he was standing on the ground, and outside the window there was. Uh, like just just the ground was level, yeah. so it would be three feet plus another, another three six or feet. So, yeah. Well, no, another three. Well, four feet. It would be three. It would be three at or least four another four feet. He was big, yeah. And he was able to stand so that his chin came to the bottom of my window. The window sill. Oh. And, and she, we literally it terrified me for years. Oh God! Just and I remember telling Steve about it one night. And he stayed up all night so that I could sleep. And I never saw him again after that. But that was around the same time that her and I had talked about it. Because when she talked to me about it, that was when I went, okay, this has got to stop. So I talked to Steve about it. And he stayed up and it went away after that. There's no way that we dreamt the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. We literally, we didn't talk about it at all until almost... I yeah, mean, we talked well, about it very briefly when I was 16, last year, but my mom so didn't ask for any, like, extreme ten details. Years, ten years difference. Oh, I forgot the end part of it, too. But, like, literally, we looked at each other, and we were both, we both went, Our it was a wide, we were like, it was a wide-brimmed yeah. hat. And, like, is it, again, is could draw like it for you. Like, but wider. Yes. Like, wider brim. Like, a fedora shape on the top. And but it room. definitely was like an indent in the middle, and then down like this, and then out quite a ways. Yeah. Out. Kind of like a mounty hat. Okay. Kind of, yeah. It was and a little bit different on the do, top, but the wire. And mounties did he, have like a bit of a lift on their boots. Yeah. But they, they, he I was, know, man. It was one, one solid shape. Yeah. You know, like there, there it's was weird. no, there was no. Like it was like a, a loose cardboard no cutout, not there a feature. There was no, you didn't see ears, you didn't. Like, it, when he turned, you didn't see his nose. You just it's saw almost like a shadow. It just, like it a just was like drawing. a face shape. Yeah. And it, when you, again, when he turned, it was there the was same no, thing. There was no, there was no there chin was no, even. There was no, it there was, was no just, profile. It was right. just like a it blob. Was like, he was the same from whatever angle yeah. that we saw. But it, it was literally and just... And the only reason I ugh. say him is that's how it felt. It was a him. And that's I'm, how... That's, unequivocally, you knew. Yeah. It was threatening. It was I don't know threatening. if it was a ghost or if it was a demon or what it was, it was, but it was not good. And it so, was not there. friendly. So, and ending and to the story, there. we moved um, just after my first year of university. So I came home that summer and we moved into the, play, the apartment we're in now. Um, and we didn't move because of the ghosts. We moved because the house was falling apart and it, was and it was too much, too much for them myself. to handle without me or my brother living there because I, had, of course, had finally moved out. Um, and, uh, when I left, we had, we had been painting my room, right? Cause I, of course, was the artist kid and had drawn, I was into Supernatural, so I had drawn yeah. Supernatural sigils and stuff all over my room in permanent marker. Permanent she marker had, is really yeah. hard to cover with paint. So mom had to go in all the time and eight layers, eight la- layers of paint it took to cover it, but she went in all the time. When I had left... The crucifix, the crucifix had been broken at some point, but I yeah. think that was a me problem and not an anyone else. Yeah, but we we bit. still had it wrapped had around wrapped my around. doorknob. Yeah. So my mom had been in and out many, many times. But every time she went, she was like, it's still there. We didn't have any problems with it. I, I was at school. I think I'd been there like a month and a half beforehand. It was still on my door. I come back and... I mean, most of my stuff had been packed up anyways, minus a few things that I left yeah. in my room. I but everywhere else that. was packing up. And so, of course, like, we were, I was only there for a couple of days. I went in, I packed up my room. Didn't even think about the crucifix. Didn't think about looking for the crucifix. None of it. And I packed up the rest of my room. We got everything. Yeah. We got, we got everything from my room out pretty quickly because 
mine was already empty, so it was just like, okay, we'll empty Kate's room out and then go from there. Um, and then I went to the back of the door. I was like, oh, I should grab the crucifix. And I, like, closed my door because it had been open for a little while. And it wasn't there. And I was like, what the H-E double hockey sticks is going on? That's such a Canadian phrase. I just I haven't heard that. that since I was like, what the H-E seven. double hockey sticks is going on? Yeah. But I was like, okay, never mind. So I say to mom, did you move my crucifix? She's like, no. I was like, okay, cool. I'm not a religious person, so I was like, if it's gone, like, I'm going to be sad about it because it belonged to my grand, like, my great-grandfather, right? Yeah. I was like, it belonged to my great-grandfather, but otherwise, like, it's fine. Um, we go through everything, we're packing everything up, and so a couple years beforehand, we had had a flood, I think, and our whole bathroom was destroyed. So we got it covered by insurance, so these guys came in, did all this sort of stuff. They left a bunch of extra tiles in the back of our bathroom cupboard. We hadn't moved them. Mom couldn't pick them up. I could sort of pick them up, but, like, there was no point in moving them. We didn't need them. We were just going to leave them with the house. And then we were like, oh, we better make sure we have everything. Like, maybe we'll take the towels with us or at least move them to a place so people know where they are. My brother comes in, picks up the tiles, and underneath it is my my grandfather, great-grandfather's crucifix. That was on my door not even a month beforehand. No one had moved the, the tiles bathroom. in the bathroom. There's 10, huge... 10, 20 feet away from my room. No one knows how it got there. We believe that the man or someone, okay. some one of the bad spirits in the house got a little pissed that we were moving and decided to be like, this doesn't work on me anymore. And kind of throw an intimidation it tactic was, yeah, in there. And... It, was, it was literally underneath the box of, and, I mean, ceramic tiles, 12 by 12 tiles. Oh. I so, have no idea how that got there. So this is, this no is why Michelle and my uh, level of um, ghost hunting, like, we both appreciate watching ghost hunting. Michelle is like, I could go to a haunted place, and I'm like, no, I don't want to do it. I, I don't want I, it You again. might want to bleep this out, but I don't fucks with ghosts, okay? I don't. <laughs> I love them, and I love learning about them, but I don't fucks with ghosts. Then. So... Because this video is going to be really, really long as yeah, it is, I'm so. going gonna, gonna to call this one. Um, so thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for sharing your stories. Thank you for Give me a bit us. of the goosebumps. I'm going to have nightmares. You know, really, you know what's really freaky, though, is if you look at that <laughs> mirror right there, because I know it's because of the fan, but it's moving, and for the first, like, five minutes of your stories, I thought the door was opening and closing. Oh, oh my God. And so, like, while I was sitting here listening to your story, yep, that I'm caught the corner panicking. of my I'm eye. And I'm, I'm like, okay. Panicking. And then a spider caught my attention, and that's when I realized, oh, yeah, the mirrors. Please like, leave it. that jump scare in. It was so good. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> yeah. You should put that in your in your, in your I probably intro. will. That <laughs> probably will. But anyway, yeah. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you guys want to see more of these ghost stories with any of my friends, especially these two, because they've got a lot. And, uh. We've done, like, the ghost walk before, and oh God, yeah. Connie and I have talked about going into a couple places as well. We're so going to try and guys... hook some, up, some yeah. up for next summer, for, next, for sure. Or be maybe, in, maybe this autumn. Maybe. Because I could Let's come see back. if we can get a night cam or something so we can actually take Let a me camera save us. Let me save I up. We'll work on it. I have a night cam. Okay, cool. well, we'll have to, we'll have to so set them. Or we'll if you even come up my area, because my area's got a lot of abandoned, abandoned places that you won't get arrested for going into. So there. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to wrap this one up and uh, we will all see you again in, in a couple weeks. Uh, again, thank you both. And uh, you guys, I can't hit the camera, so I'm just going to say have a great evening. Bye! Subscribe! But I got tunnel vision and I just felt so closed. I can like visualize this entire doorway falling on me. You could literally see the ceiling upstairs through the floor. Literally you scoot your way past and then you like bend around the railing and then there's a hole in the floor. I started realizing like I can't breathe. Like everywhere I went I felt like something was gonna happen. I wasn't even crying. I was on the ground on my back trying to process what just came out in front of me. And I look at my mom like I did actually go to the cemetery today and uh, I did kind of ask dad to give me a sign.